Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Monday, August the... It's uh, August 4th, 2014. This is Proof Weight Loss Surgery Works, and I'm your Monday Vlogger B. Now, this week's topic is my favorite topic in the entire world. You guessed it. Fitness. Let me read it. It says, On Purpose Movement. Fitness. What does that mean to you? Share the evolution of your fitness journey. Why do you do it? Is it necessary? What is your favorite benefit of living fit? <laughs> and maybe I'm a little pumped up because I just got back from boot camp. Uh, I don't know, but maybe it's just because like, I like fitness so much. So what is the evolution of my fitness journey? You know, when I started my whole weight loss journey, and this was two years pre-op, two, maybe three years pre-op, um, I had a... Uh, I had a hell of a time, you know. No, you know, it was probably even before then. You know, honestly, this might have been five or six years before I considered weight loss surgery. I was working out, um, I was in college at SFA in Stephen F. Austin in Nacogdoches, Texas, and I was an assistant coach there. I worked with scout teams and, and scout video and stuff like that. But anyway, I was working out in the mornings with the football team, and in the afternoons, I was working out with this big huge marine former tank driver buddy of mine and uh he was a bodybuilder he used to sell his magazines and stuff and he would teach me all sorts of crap about food fitness nutrition the whole nine yards and so i learned a few things you know and, and even further back than that you know i was an athlete when i was young uh, I mean, I was always overweight my entire life, but, you know, I played football, played basketball, played baseball, did all that stuff. So I knew about fitness. I knew how to work out. It wasn't new to me. Um, you know, food was a big part of it, and, you know, my health was a big part of it, for those of you guys that follow me on my personal channel. And I grew up with thyroid problems and I have a history of comorbidities and all that stuff, but, you know, stay on track here. Um, so this whole time, I was learning to work out, and... We would do weights, mostly weights. You know, when you're in football, weights. When you're a bodybuilder, weights. That's what we did. Weights, 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 weights. I hated weights. Hated weights. Because all these guys, when they get in there, they pump themselves up, they beat themselves in the chest, and they're like, rawr, rawr. And it's just, I hate it. It, it, it. That's not me, right? I didn't feel like I was doing anything. I mean, you feel like you're doing something, but you know what? I didn't feel like I was doing anything. I could feel my chest getting stronger, my arms getting stronger, doing curls. And, but it wasn't like, it wasn't me. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't me. And it gets boring after a while doing the same thing every single day. So I tried to run. You know, that's the other thing I knew how to do, run. And so I was running in the mornings and lifting in the afternoons. And, and that's just what I did. I was gaining weight, gaining weight, gaining weight. Um, and that's when I started to look at nutrition. Uh, it's also when I found out that I had a thyroid problem. So fast forward five years to uh, about, I was two years, two years pre-op at this point. And it was the first time I'd ever lost significant weight. You know, I was on my thyroid medication. I was on, uh, I was eating a militant menu and by militant menu I mean I had everything planned out my main my meals consisted of four things I ate brown rice chicken broccoli and what else did I have uh, brown rice chicken broccoli and oh protein chicks yeah that was it that was all I ate period breakfast lunch dinner year and a half straight that's what I ate Blech. but Here's the thing. I lost weight. I lost a lot of weight. I went from officially 356 pounds. Realistically, it was about 405 pounds. Um, down to 225 pounds. And I did that. Was, this is pre-op. This is two years pre-op. Um, and the whole time, I was doing the same routine that I did when I was at Stephen F. Austin. I was running in the morning, lifting weights in the afternoon, working out twice a day, hour and a half a day I mean I was Boston home and I did it because I needed to do it you know I, I had already gone past this point of of no return I had already gone through my depression I had already gone through all these psychological things that needed to take place for me to decide that I needed to change my lifestyle um, and fitness was a big part of it and I knew that I always knew that I just ignored it and 
I guess, you know, I got into a relationship and I got happy and I got complacent and those things stopped for me. You know, the fitness stopped, the nutrition went to crap, um, and not to tell my entire life story here because we wouldn't want to focus on fitness, but when I decided to have weight loss surgery, you know, I did the only two things I knew how to do, lift and, and run. And if I didn't have a place to lift, I just ran. Um, and it was never for distance or for, for, for anything like that. It was just, I just went and ran, you know. And I didn't know at the time um, that they had races that people could participate in. I had no clue, you know. And I said, you know what, I, I want to do a 5K. This seems like something that I could do. So I started training for my first 5K. And I really kind of, I enjoyed it. I, I liked doing it, you know. It was, it was something that I loved to do. I liked the challenge. I liked being able to, to, to go through the training program and run in the race and, and finishing and not getting a medal, long story. Um, <laughs> to this day, I've, I've never run a 5K that I got a medal for. Yeah, so I still don't have a race medal. Anyway, um, so, yeah, and I really liked running small distances and then I got it in my head that I wanted to run a half marathon and I said you know what I'm gonna train for a half and I started to train for a half and I didn't have a race picked out thank God because I would really felt like a loser but I wanted to see if I could run the distance so I started building and building and building and I think my longest distance was seven miles and which was phenomenal for me you know, it was the farthest I'd ever run in my entire life and I didn't even intend to run seven miles that day I was just trying to see how far I could run and it turned out I ran seven miles and that was in the heat of Las Vegas so I mean I feel pretty good about that you know but the one thing I realized it took me an hour and 15 minutes I want to say and I kind of fell out of love with running that day I realized that I didn't enjoy running so much as I did feeling strong and feeling fit and the, 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 the rush that you get from endorphins when you push your body to the limits. That was what I liked. It wasn't the distance. It wasn't the running. You know, In fact, I found out that running for me is kind of boring after about 45 minutes. And that's why I try to keep my distances down to, to, to less than four miles because I, I just, it, it's, it's not something that I enjoy. Um, but then, you know, fast forward to, to probably a year ago, you know, I had to find something that was, uh, that I did enjoy. And that's the thing is, is I, I, I was working a lot and finding time to work out was not there. Um. I thought I wanted to do a Tough Mudder. That's when I ran my seven miles and I realized that I really don't like running so much. And we were doing circuit training as well. And circuit training is where you, you have a series of exercises and most of them are body resistance exercises. And you, uh, you, you do them, so you gotta do, say you're doing, and this is a bad example, but say you're doing push-ups, sit-ups, and squats. You can do three sets of 15. So you do your push-ups and then you, you know, 15, and you use some cardio, and then you do sit-ups, and then you do some cardio, and then you do your 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 squats, and then you do some cardio, and then you go back and you do your push-ups, and then you do some cardio, and you do your sit-ups, and you just okay, so you do three sets of each one, and that's that's circuit. Um, and you do it by yourself, or you know, I had some guys I was training with. So there was two other guys that I worked with that we were doing together, and I kind of liked that because we were there every day. It was a social thing almost. You know, for me, working out is very personal. Once I get to a place and it's time to work out, my my mind and my peripheral and my 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 vision and my my attention span goes, and I have laser beam focus. You know, that's why uh, I, I when when I go work out with other people, I say, yeah, come work out with me, and then they they go work out. And they're like, what are you going to do? And I'm like, oh, I'll be over here because yeah, it's I'm a terrible workout partner because uh, because I just I focus on my workout. Um, but in circuit training, it's okay. Like that, that's okay because you know it is your workout. You know you have people there and they're pushing you while you're doing your sets. But it's not like you're waiting on a piece of equipment or waiting on a bench, or waiting on on a, a, a you know a treadmill or something. You know you're doing the same things, and you may not even be doing them at the same time. I might be, might be doing my push-ups and he might be doing his squats, but we're encouraging each other. And I enjoyed that group circuit training. 
Um, and when I got back to Houston uh, about a year ago, I found uh, boot camps. Didn't know what boot camps were. But a buddy of mine does a boot camp. He does it twice a week. And he uh, it's a charity thing. We bring canned goods and we do the workout and then we go to the house. And I really, really enjoyed it because there's people there. It's been anywhere from six to sometimes it's 15 to 20 people. We work out for an hour. We work out hard. It's high intensity. And it's just like circuit training, you know, where you have these workouts and they're on a whiteboard and you have different things you do and you do so many sets of these and, and then you go to the house. Um, and it's awesome. I love it. I fell in love with workouts. And and then I found something else and, and, and I'm going to talk about it for just a minute. It kind of scares people off sometimes because when they see it, when you Google it, you look at it on YouTube, it's intimidating. Um, is that kind of led me into CrossFit. And I still do my boot camp workouts. Um, and I haven't done CrossFit in, in a while. I got into it a little bit when I was in Las Vegas. Uh, but since I got back to Texas, I haven't done it. I've been trying to find a place, and I'm hoping I can find one this week. And I'm, I'm off work this week, so uh, this on my goals, a list of things to do is to find a CrossFit box. But anyway, CrossFit is kind of like boot camp workout. You know, it's a social setting. There's a several of you there, and you do these exercises, and you do them just like you would in a circuit, but it incorporates a lot of other things, um, like Olympic lifting. You know, you do power cleans and deadlifts, and, and, and when you look up, CrossFit, uh, you're going to see these really ripped, not ripped, but lean, healthy, fit people. And it's a big turnoff for people like me and, and, and for a lot of us that aren't in that condition. But once you go to the class and you see that not everybody's like that, it's a different story. Um, but that's where I am today, you know, with my fitness is, is the workouts are different every single day. Um, they're always high intensity. There's always somebody there to push you. And no matter what your physical fitness level, or you know, if you're a guy or a girl, if you've got an injury or if you don't, there's always ways that the exercises can be modified to match your fitness level or your condition. You know, if, if we're doing squats and you got a bad back, well, you know, we can do you know something else. You can do leg lifts. Or if we're doing planks and, and you know your your knees are busted, well, you can do sit ups. You know, it is it's all these different things. If you can't do a push up, you can do them from your knees, like a girl push up. Or you know, if that's too much for you, you can do a decline push up, where your 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 lifted your head's higher than your feet, which makes it easier. You know, there are all sorts of things that we can do to make these movements. They call them movements, exercises. Uh, to fit your, your situation. And, and that's the thing that I love about, about boot camp and about CrossFit is that it's a cross training program. Uh, it can be a cross training program, and it's unlike anything I've ever seen because it's everything that I like about working out. It's, it's different every time. Uh, it's not just running, it's not just lifting, it's not just cardio, it's not just body movements or resistance. You really don't need a lot of equipment. If you can't make it to the gym one day, you know, or you can't make it out to work out one day. You can do the workout from home. Um, usually, when you go to excuse me, when you go to classes, you know, like at the Y, or if you go to you know like a CrossFit box, they have several throughout the day. And if you don't can't make the morning ones, you can do the midday ones or the afternoon ones, or you can do one on ones. Now there are some downfalls at CrossFit. CrossFit can be expensive. You know, you got to kind of shop around. You're not going to pay forty dollars a month for CrossFit, but I guarantee you that the results you get at CrossFit are going to be 10 times better than what you get at a gym. Because when you go to a gym, you go to the gym and you're like, okay, what am I going to do now? When you go to CrossFit or even just to a boot camp, the workout's there. It's ready to go. It's on the board. It's right there. You just start. You you warm up. You stretch. You start. And and that's it. And and that's the thing I love about it. It's it's awesome. It's it, it's it's Everything, and I think I said this, it's everything that I love about fitness combined, you know, and all the things that I don't throw out. I really did fall in love the first time I went to a boot camp and, it, and the first time that, that I ever did a CrossFit workout. Um, why? <laughs> That's the other thing. Why? You know, there's a couple of reasons why. One, I have to. You know, I know that I have to. I've lived it. I've seen it. Uh, I know what happens to me when I don't, you know, um... If you don't move, if the scale's not going to move. If weight is important to you, then you've got to get out and you've got to move. And it doesn't matter what you do. If you run, you crossfit, you bike, you swim, you jog, you jazzercise, whatever. Zumba, it doesn't matter. you got to do something. Um, 
and, and is it necessary? It's kind of a redundant question, but it's absolutely necessary. You know, I I I, I kind of skipped something, and I'll talk about that one at the last the part of the last question. You know, you you got to. This is why we do this. You can't just sit around. I mean, some of you can, but you can't just sit around and wait for the weight to fall off. You can't just sit around and be healthy. It doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. The tool. Sorry about that. I uh, had to clear up some space on my phone. The tool does not do it by itself. A hammer sitting on a shelf won't build a house. It takes a pair of hands, it takes a brain, it takes nails and materials. We have to provide those materials, we have to provide that motivation for that hammer to be able to do its work, just like we have to provide the things for our tool to do its work. It's that simple. What was your, what is your favorite benefit of living fit? You know, this is why I do it. It's the part I said I skipped. I know that I can do any damn thing that I want. Anything. I want to run a 5K. I go train. I can do it. I want to run a Tough mother. I go train. I know I can do it. I kind of don't want to run a Tough mother because, like I said, I don't like running distance. It's not my thing. But... Maybe if there's a five mile obstacle course that's like Tough butter, maybe I might go do that. You know, adventure runs, I can do that. If I want to run a try, guess what? I know that if I train, I can do it. Because I know how to be fit. I know what it's like to be fit. And once you get a taste of that, you want it every single day. It becomes part of your life. And that's when you know you're winning. When being healthy and being fit is part of your everyday life. So that's it. That's what I got. Sorry this is a little long-winded this week. I hope you guys got something out of it. Please make sure you thumbs up. Don't thumbs down. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Come back and see us tomorrow for another Proof Weight Loss Surgery Works video. Come back and see me on Monday for another Proof Weight Loss Surgery Works vlog. Have a wonderful week, guys, and take care. And go work out.